What's going on everybody? I'm Harrison Taylor and this is Lone Depot Park, the home of the Miami Marlins. Located in Miami, Florida, Lone Depot Park has the capacity of 37,442, which is the third smallest in Major League Baseball. Only behind the Rays Tropicana Field and the Guardians Progressive Field. The ballpark was built as a baseball specific covered venue for the Marlins. The team was previously playing at today's Hard Rock Stadium, the home of the Miami Dolphins. While the field was designed for the possibility of baseball, the sight lines, Dolphins branding, and Florida's tropical weather led to the need for a new facility. The Dolphins also intended to terminate the Marlins lease in 2010. This led to a frenzy with relocation to several cities being explored. The new ballpark was ultimately built on the former site of the Orange Bowl in Miami and broke ground in July of 2009. The stadium cost $634 million to construct and opened as Marlins Park on March 5th, 2012. The newly named Miami Marlins hosted their first regular season game at the facility on April 4th, in which they lost the Cincinnati Reds 4-0. The stadium broke traditional ballpark design and opted for a more contemporary approach. Marlins Park underwent its first renovation in 2016 to lower and move in its outfield wall to make it more hitter-friendly. After Derek Jeter took over in 2018, many of the ballpark's unique features slowly began to fade away, like the fish tanks behind home plate, Clevelander bar, and swimming pool, as well as the home run sculpture moving from the outfield to the front plaza. The walls were also moved in once again in 2020. In 2021, Marlins Park became Lone Depot Park as naming rights to the ballpark were sold to Lone Depot. In addition to the Marlins, Lone Depot Park has hosted the Miami Beach Bowl, games from the World Baseball Classic, and an MLB All-Star Game. The Marlins' lease of the ballpark runs until at least 2047. One really cool feature of Lone Depot Park is right behind me, it's the Bobblehead Museum. Not only does the display feature Marlins bobbleheads, but it features several bobbleheads from all 30 MLB teams. The shelving is custom built and shakes slightly in order to make all the bobbleheads bobble. There's even more to explore in the outfield, including a photo op and Billy's Boathouse, a play area for kids that is also used as a meet and greet location for Billy the Marlin during the fifth inning. Fans can also find a virtual reality home run derby game. In left field, there are large panels of windows overlooking the Miami skyline. They're opened on occasion to let in the fresh air. In front of the windows is Auto Nation Alley, featuring tiered standing rooms and a concession stand. Fans can also access the Recess Sports Lounge from this area. Back on the main concourse is a Budweiser bar. At the third base entrance, fans can find a Fanatics team store and a display showcasing the history of the Orange Bowl. By home plate is another photo op and the Biscayne Bay Brew Hall featuring tables to gather around and enjoy some beverages. There's another store as well. In right field, fans can find standing room, another bar, as well as the elevated home run porch seating. Outside of the ballpark on the east side of the stadium, fans can find the home run sculpture that goes off whenever there is a Marlins home run and at 3.05 p.m. every day in honor of Miami's area code. There are also giant letters that spell out Orange Bowl or Game 1, depending on where you stand within the plaza. On the west side of the plaza, fans can find the Folklore Tower, which are repurposed shipping containers that serve as photo ops inspired by the team's City Connect jerseys. Sometimes you can even go inside the shipping containers for cool light-up photographs. All right, we are outside of Lone Depot Park right now with the popcorn. It's three dollars from Familia Faves. It's the three oh five pricing, so you get three dollar pricing, you got five dollar pricing. They also sell regular souvenir popcorn in a larger bucket for about nine dollars. So let's go ahead and give it a taste. Now you can tell that popcorn is definitely freshly popped. I heard it going off in the back of the stand, so that's definitely a plus. You can taste a nice warm buttery flavor, a lot of salt on there too, so it's not too dry. And the best part is the kernels are not overdone, no burnt flavor at all. It could be slightly warmer, but other than that, really salty, really buttery. It's just a good popcorn. So if we're looking at our top of the pop rankings here for ballpark rides, number one is going to be Tropicana Field. This is number two here at Lone Depot Park, and in third place we have Truist Park. Lone Depot Park offers a Latin flair at its concession stands. At La Cocina, fans can find Cubans and many more Caribbean dishes. The change-up features a rotating menu each homestand. This homestand it was featuring gourmet quesadillas, including one with steak, brie, and roasted poblanos. Classic ballpark food like chicken tenders and hot dogs can be found at Obie's, which honors the Orange Bowl's mascot. 
and at Bites de la Calle, fans can find the Salchi Papas and what we will be trying, the Latin Nachos. We just got back from Bites de la Calle, which is a uh, concession stand. It's a test concession stand, actually. So they're testing out new recipes and stuff here at Lone Depot Park. And today we have the Latin Nachos for $10.50. Come in this souvenir helmet. Now, I know what you're thinking. If it looks kind of small for $10.50, I also kind of agree with that. Um, it's bigger than an ice cream helmet, but smaller than your typical souvenir nacho helmet. So uh, we'll give it a taste. It looks like it has cheese, uh, black beans, corn, and some pickled onions on top. So let's go ahead, let's give it a taste. You can already see these chips are so floppy. Um, and cheese has been very warm, so I think it's been sitting out for a little bit. You know, for 10.50, I would hope this would be a little better. It's probably not what I would get again if I was to come to this ballpark again. So if we're looking on our pop point scale, this is probably gonna be two pop points. Um, it's cold, the ingredients work well together, but they could have put some more protein or something on it for it being 1050 and the portion size kind of off. It was a little bigger. I think I might've rated it a little more, but just overall two pop points. It's just kind of meh in Miami. Overall at Lone Depot Park, I was very disappointed in the Latin nachos, but was super impressed by the quality of the popcorn. So for food, the ballpark earns three pop points. Tickets and the home run porch were $10, prepaid parking was $15, and the affordable 305 food and beverage menus earns four pop points for value. The new lighting system gave the ballpark an exciting atmosphere. The Marlins Mermaids performed on the field, and there were several other on-field promotions. But the mascot race got eliminated. However, that doesn't hurt the ballpark too much because for fun, it earns four pop points. However, the toning down of the vibrant colors and removing of the cool features like the pool and fish tanks from the ballpark causes the fan experience to be lacking, which earns the ballpark three pop points for fan experience. Add it all up and Lone Depot Park gets an overall stadium score of 7 out of 10 or warm and white. Well, you have the score and that's the show. Thank you for joining me here at Lone Depot Park, the home of the Miami Marlins. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think of the ballpark. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes.